Good morning. Welcome to the National Shrine of Our Lady of Częstochowa. <clears throat> Everyone coming to Mass today is, lis is listening participant in the Word of God. But would you like to participate in proclaiming the work of God? The Shrine is looking for new lectors of all ages. If you feel you might have the call and the passion to be a lector, please call the Shrine's main office and join us at our lecture training session, even if you are not sure. The training session for new lectors will take place on Monday, July 27th at 7 p.m. in the Lower Church. We will be glad to answer any questions and help provide guidance should you consider becoming involved in this holy and spiritual ministry. Today, we also celebrate the Feast of St. Christopher, the patron of drivers. We ask God for his special protection for all the drivers, and after all masses, we will have the blessing of cars and motorcycles in the front of the church. We ask you to wear your mask inside the church at all times and to remove them only for the moment of Holy Communion. We advise everyone to receive Holy Communion on the hand. This is a, a temporary situation, and we hope people will understand this for the love of neighbor and the safety of everyone. Holy Communion on the tongue will be distributed at the tabernacle on the left side of the church. Our cafeteria is open today. Dining inside, outside, or takeout is possible. There are some picnic tables set on the grounds for your use. Our religious bookstore is open as well. Our sincere and prayerful gratitude is extended to all who continue to support the shrine during the pandemic. May God reward you with the continual intercession of Our Lady of Częstochowa. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. God is patient and kind. Growing in faith is like striving to grow as wheat in a field mixed with weeds. We are faced with temptations. We do not pray as we ought. We are weak and in need of forgiveness. But God is just and kind. He judges with leniency sends his spirit to our aid and lovingly nurtures us and patiently awaits our growth. Today's intention is for the Saint Anne Novena. Our con celebrants today are Father Tadeusz and Father Joseph. Please join in welcoming the celebrants for today's mass. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, Eucharist means thanksgiving. 
at every Eucharist, we say thank to God for his love for us. We say thank to God for Jesus Christ and his grace. We say thank to God for so many gifts which God gives us every day. During this Eucharist, we would like to say especially thanksgiving to God for Father Joseph and his 55 years of priesthood, which he celebrated just a couple weeks ago. We say thank to God for the graces which through his ministry, through administering of the sacraments, touched so many people during these 55 years. And many of them are here today. We say thank to God that Father Joseph answered his call to be a priest. And we say thank to God for that he, even though probably there were so many difficult moments, he stayed a priest for 55 years. So may this Eucharist be a thanksgiving to God for every priest who we met in our life, and especially today for Father Joseph. Thank you, Father Provincial. When uh, apostles were called to follow Jesus, they obviously did not know that their, their destiny will be to go to the ends of the world to proclaim the gospel, to absolve people from sins, uh, to teach how to forgive and how to love, to finally to put their lives on behalf of the gospel. So let us all ask God for forgiveness of our sins. Let us ask that we'll always be true to our personal vocation as Jesus called us. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, you I have done what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. of the world 
have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated on the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gift of your grace, that may fervent in hope, faint in charity, that they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of the night, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds. And those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. and 
fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with the inexpressible groanings, and the one who sees, searches hearts knows what is the intent of the Spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sow good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along the, with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at the harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, collect first the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a master seed that the person took and sowed in a field. In the smaller, it is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast 
that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been through the, said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he dismissed the crowd and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said to them, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of kingdom. <coughs> the weeds are the key children of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The man of men will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I'm very grateful to God for the religious vocation, for the priestly vocation, and as I mentioned at the beginning, when I was ordained at the Asnagura at the chapel of Our Lady, no, none of us were thinking that they will, what kind of work they will do. I never dream being United States. But then God has his way. So I came here to the shrine and then to other parishes to proclaim the good news and to celebrate the Eucharist. And my ministry, as is all the ministry of priests, was not made by a person who wants to do this and do that. I think the same way was when Jesus was sitting with his disciples at the Last Supper, they never thought what will happen to them, that they will have to leave Jerusalem, their home, their, their boats, their fishing, and from fishing fish, they will have to fish men. I'm very grateful to God for all those years of my ministry, which I make the thanksgiving to the hands of Our Lady of Częstochowa. Today, again, we'll read from the Gospel of St. Matthew. As at the very beginning of the, of the Bible, we have five books, Pentateuch, uh, of, the, of, the, of the books of Old Testament, so St. Matthew writing his gospel has uh, five parts pretending to the kingdom of God. Some chapters at the beginning that are interrupted by something, and then again St. Matthew returns to the theme of kingdom of God, and then again and again and again. Who is the kingdom of God and what is the kingdom of God? There is no simple explanation to it. If we could use comparison, it is like a precious, beautiful stone. When the light goes through it and all those colors are in that stone which are thrown out so we could enjoy it. 
so we could be fascinated by all those reds and blue and yellow colors with the beautiful shape of the, uh, of the pre precious stone. Of course, this is very poor explanation, but yet it gives us some idea. Last Sunday, we have in the gospel that Jesus said, sitting by the seashore and looking outside, he saw the man sowing his field. As he went with the seed and threw the seed on the field, hoping that they will bring the greatest harvest, some fell here and there between stones, on the path, between thorns, and finally on the good soil. Today, gospel, parable of the sower, it is the Son of Man comes and throw in our heart on the, into our hearts, in the soil of our heart, the good wheat to grow. But then the enemy comes at night. Sneaky one comes and sow the, the wheat, and both of them grow. Wheat is rambunctious, wants to have more soil, moisture, most to grow greater and all that. And it presses by its dynamics as it grows and takes all the good soil juices, maybe depriving even the, wheat, the, 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 the wheat uh, of its nourishment. And that's how it's in the world. Sometimes people who bring the wrong things are very powerful. They try to overcome good and so on. In our times when we are preparing for beatification of Cardinal Wyszynski, we read the history that they propose that it will not be the church, the Holy Father, the bishops, but the government, communist government, will run the parishes and the dioceses. And the Cardinal Wyszynski said, non possumus. It was said this at Yasna Gura. We will not, we cannot do that. Then you will go to prison. Then I will go to prison. I am not the first one to suffer. All the big bishops of the world suffer. And so he was in turn for three years. And I remember distinctly the people were demanding in 1956 return of Cardinal Wyszynski from prison. They demanded that there will be people will be free to listen to radio, whomever source they want, that they will not be forced on the young people to join communist organization. But with no exception, everyone said, and we demand that Cardinal Wyszynski will return. And so they gave the message to Karno Wyszynski in Comancha. And he says to the, the messenger, he says, I did not come here on my own. Government put me here. Government has to take me out. So finally they did. Maybe evil it seems to be larger and stronger, but has a clay legs. It collapses. The gospel today of the wheat and weeds speaks to us very clearly. At the end of time, the angels of God will correct weeds and wheat. Weeds separate from weeds. And what happened with these rambunctious weeds? They are burned up. What kind of message is that for us? That we should try to live life according to the virtue. 
Maybe it seems that evil sometimes is stronger and more powerful. But on the long run, we're always better sticking with Jesus and with his teaching. Today, as we are happy to celebrate Eucharist in open churches, we have to remember that uh, the Eucharist is the center of our Christian life. I was under the impression that after the churches were closed, people were demanding that the churches would be open, that our churches would be filled to the brim. They would be filled completely, that people will return with great zest to the churches. My experience is those people <coughs> who are coming and are faithful to Jesus remain faithful. We don't see too many people who are starved and now want to return. Let us pray that good will triumph because Eucharist is the bread of life. Adam and Eve were placed in an in a Eden garden, the beautiful garden when everything was pleasure and light and the wonderful expression of union between God and man. And in the garden was the, the tree of life. And Adam and Eve knew that they should not eat from it. Because if they eat, they will live forever. Unfortunately, sin caused that they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And reading through the pages of the scripture, we do not find again any mentioning of living forever. <coughs> Until we come to the Gospel of St. John, in a chapter six, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats me will live forever. Will live forever. The tree of life is Jesus Christ. This bread comes from heaven. And whoever eats this bread will live forever, records John, apostle in the chapter 6. And what happens? Some say it is too hard to listen to that words. They walk away and never follow Jesus again. Also, there were those who have very good position in a company of Jesus, like Judas. He did not believe what Jesus said, but he stayed because Job was paying well. <clears throat> he was helping himself from the from the treasury of the apostles. And Jesus was very gentle with him. Maybe he bothered him in his conscience, but uh, never said anything against Judas. He tries by his Jesus, by love, to keep him that he will believe. Probably today, as they say, there are many people who come to Holy Communion do not believe in real presence of our Lord. <coughs> they continue in their sin and belief. They do whatever they want in their lives. And they say, God understands. God understands. The parable of kingdom of God about, about wheat has to be made in flour, has to make a dough, has to be consecrated that yeast which changes ordinary bread into the body and blood of Christ has to happen at the altar. But some do not recognize that. And they continue in their unbelief. And Judas was very good and maybe many apostles agree with him when he went to the house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. 
because Lazarus was brought from death. And Mary was enthusiastic that she has her beloved brother back home. And she did something which only her heart could, could conceive and anointed Jesus with the most expensive nard. And Judas said that could be sold to the, and given pan to the poor. And Jesus said, yes, poor you have always here, but you don't have me. Judas did not look at the love of Mary toward Jesus, the great gratitude. He was thinking that maybe he could help himself from, his, from the money which he will receive. And then at the Last Supper, when Jesus said to Judas, go whatever you have to do, everybody thought that he's going to give something to the poor, but he went to betray Jesus, sold him for terrible silver pieces. He disregarded body of Christ. This is bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert that died, but this is the bread of life. And today, as we look to the history, we look at the saints of the church, we see that some of their bodies are preserved. Saint Charbel, Saint, Saint, uh, uh, Saint Bernadette Subiru, Andrew Babola, who was killed because they hated the Catholic religion and he was missionary. He was tortured terribly. He was tortured because he was Catholic priest, because he preached the gospel, so they cut off his tongue. Because he was a priest, they, they skinned him because they said, you are a priest, so you have a chasuble, so they cut his, his skin in that face and finally threw him into one of the basements of the churches. And one day the superior got them news, come and take me out. He went there and looked at all those people who were murdered for Catholic faith, and he saw that one body was fresh. The wounds were still fresh. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This was a visible sign for us in the saints whose body are uncorruptible. They ate the bread of life. That bread will bring them to heaven. They will never die. They will never die because they will be with God. To be with God means to be together. Today, in the gospel, we have many parables. But I think the parable of wheat and weeds are very important for us because we are tempted by the evil who present itself as a good and progressive, but actually it's not so much of that, but it is someone wants to make advantage for themselves. Between evil and good, the only difference is not because they are less dynamic, but they're less expressive because evil will never sacrifice itself for good. Good sacrifices. Jesus gave his life for us, and he gives his life in the Eucharist, who is truly bond and blood of Christ. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Through God, from true God, be God and life. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he gained down from heaven with the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake was crucified and then Pontius Pilate. He suffered and died to the birth. He rose again. and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who give of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son his will shall be glorified. We have spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. To the Heavenly Father, we present our prayers and petitions to the hands of Our Lady of Chenstehova. That the people of God may continue to grow in faith and holiness through the power of God's word and the sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may guide all those in power toward unity and peace for the sake of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may bless with abundance the fields that feed the people of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's patience and kindness may enrich and inspire the love we share within families and communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died and soon feast at the heavenly banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life, that more young men and women will have the courage to follow a call from God to serve Christ in his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are involved in the success of the St. Anne Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we present to you this, these prayers and petitions. Listen to them. Bring uh, to the conclusion coronavirus so we could fully return to the, your service. We ask this through Christ our Lord. God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion valid offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that with what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always for the word to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal of God, for I know it belongs to you, boundless glory, that you came to this aid, a mortal being with your divinity, 
and even fashion for us a remedy of our mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels address your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thank, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thank, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, is one his resurrection ascending to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and, and with, with him, him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, we have service to, to, call, to call him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, and grand peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With and now let us exchange the sign of peace. supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I shall, shall be healed.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass through the former ways of new rest of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank God uh, during this Eucharist for these 55 years of Father Joseph and for all the graces we all received through his ministry. I think it is a good time to thank Father Joseph. As I said, <laughs> as I said at the beginning, for answering for that God's call to be a priest and for persevering 55 years and eight years uh, of his life. He celebrated his birthday uh, lockdown because of COVID uh, just a couple months ago. So there are two different uh, celebrations. And we would like to wish Father Joseph many, many more blessings, good health, protection of Our Lady of Czestochowa, and everything what we need to fulfill his life, priestly life, religious life, and human life with the grace and blessings of God. And we have uh, representatives of our congregation to present oh. Father Joseph with some flowers. Please come up. It's always very good to celebrate, and 55 years, it is a very nice celebration. But apart from that celebration, today in our shrine, we celebrate also St. Christopher's Day. So I will now say a prayer of blessing of all your cars. I think you came uh, in a cars or any other vehicles. And uh, if you wish, if you wish, your uh, car to be blessed with holy water, there will be a father in front of the church uh, blessing the cars with holy water. So you can just drive up and have your cars be blessed. So let us now pray through the intercession of St. Christopher. Grant me, O Lord, a steady hand and watchful eye, that no one shall be heard as I pass by. Thou gavest life, I pray no act of mine may take away, O mar that gift of thine. 
shelter those, dear Lord, who bear my company from the evils of fire and all calamity. Teach me to use my car for others' need, nor miss through love of undue speed the beauty of the world, that thus I may with joy and courtesy go on my way. Saint Christopher, holy patron, saint of travelers, protect me and lead me safely to my destiny. O almighty and merciful God, who hast commissioned thy angels to guide and protect us, command them to be our assiduous companions from our setting out until our return, to clothe us with their invisible protection, to keep from us all danger of collision, of fire, of explosion, of fall and bruises. And finally, having preserved us from all evil and especially from sin, to guide us to our heavenly home through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we ask Father Joseph for okay. final blessing. Okay, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. And uh, I will be available in the cafeteria. If you come, I have the picture still from my 50th anniversary. I didn't print anything new. So if you want to have those pictures, you are free to pick them up in the cafeteria. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I'm very impressed by you, Zio. God bless. Oh,